I'm Rick from Artisam, and today we want to talk about component replacements for your Ion electric ice auger. Please refer to your owner's manual for correct part numbers. Let's get started. In this segment, we're going to discuss replacing the controller in your Ion power head. This is a controller, and this is what you'll get when you order one. Some of the symptoms that you may uh, experience that indicates that you may need a new controller is for one the battery charger indicates you have a fully charged battery number two your battery indicates a full charge number three when you activate the on switch the lights come on only and the power head will not run and four you experience all of these symptoms and you may have already replaced the on switch. Let's get started. First thing we want to do is always remove the battery before doing any service on your power head. Next, we have to remove the on switch and the reverse switch in order to install the controller. So let's start with the on switch. Start by removing the retaining collars. Next, using a T10 Torx driver, remove the two screws securing the switch housing. Next, remove the switch housing by splitting it in the middle. And removing one half at a time. Next, we'll remove the switch from the wires. Pull back the insulation from the ends of the wires. This will expose the terminal. Next, these are locking terminals, so depress the small locking tab while pulling on the wire. Next, we'll have to remove the reverse switch. Start with removing the retaining collar. Next, since the switch housing parts down the middle, pull back the reverse decal so that you can reuse it, just pull back one half. Then remove the two retaining screws in the switch housing. Then split the housing. And again, remove the switch. The same as the on switch, remove the insulation. Depress the small locking tab to unlock the terminal. Next, 
Next we have to remove the locking collars in the back of the handlebars. to remove the back panel. To do this, we'll use a T10 Torx driver, move the two retaining screws on the bottom of the cover, Next, carefully turn the power head upside down and we'll have to remove this screw. This requires a 2.5 millimeter hex head wrench. And it's sometimes easier to loosen the four remaining screws. Then we can remove the cover. And there is our controller. The controller sits in the two recesses in the bottom of the housing. So to remove it, simply lift Clear the handlebars and the controller will lift out of the housing. Next, we'll grab the battery wires and pull them up out of their recess down in the bottom of the cavity here. That'll expose our, our connector. You can disconnect the connector by pushing down on the locking terminal and pulling them apart. Next we have to do the same on the opposite side. Pull the connector up from the cavity, push the locking tab and pull the connectors apart. Now we have the wires to the on switch which need to be pulled through the handlebar. The wires to the reverse switch which get pulled through the handlebar as well. And now the only remaining connection is that with the LED light board. To remove the controller from the light board, you have to use a razor blade or a scissors. Carefully cut the back of the insulation loose, the shrink wrap tubing, to expose the connector at the board. You'll then want to use your razor blade and carefully scrape any residual sealant off of this connection. and then disconnect the controller from the light board. There's your old controller. We'll start assembling the new controller. To replace the new controller, Start by reassembling it, the connection onto the light board. Carefully make your connection. Put the insulation back over it. And now to secure this, you're gonna to wanna to use some electric tape.
Next, reconnect the controller to the motor by pushing the connectors together and checking that it snaps securely. This wire can now be reinstalled into the cavity within the housing. Then reconnect the controller back to the battery harness. Connecting the two connectors until you hear a click. And reinstall the connector, connector back into the cavity. Next, we're going to reinstall the on switch wires into the handlebar by inserting them into the hole in the handlebar. Next, we'll reinstall the reverse switch wires by installing them into the hole in the handlebar. Now at this point, we can reinstall our reverse switch. This will help to secure the, the wires into the handlebar. And we can reinstall the reverse switch housing. Install the two protrusions in the switch housing into the holes within the handlebar. Install the switch onto the two protrusions on the switch housing. Assemble the two switch housing pieces together. Check your switch at that time. Then replace the two retaining screws. Install the decal. And the retaining collar.
Next, we'll replace the on switch. Start by installing the switch onto the wires. Making sure that the locking tab snaps. And that the installation is in place. Next, install the switch housing into the handlebars by pushing the two tabs into the two holes in the handlebar. Install the safety paddle by installing this return spring. Install the switch into the switch housing by lining the two holes with the protrusions in the housing. We want to make sure that this wire terminal is clear of this area so that the housing can close tightly. Next, install the trigger and the trigger return spring. Install the spring into the back of the trigger. The, st the spring is curved. Install the spring so that it follows the contours of the trigger. Install it into the switch housing. Replace the switch housing and end plate. Check the operation of the switch and then secure the retaining screws. Next, we can replace the retaining collar. switch is replaced. To reinstall the controller into the cavity, orientate it in such a way that the light board is at the bottom of the cavity and that the wires come off on the side where the on switch is located. 
like such. Rotate the housing so that it inserts into the recess, then the housing, and rotate it into position. Now we'll replace the cover. While holding it, reinstall the cover retaining screws and tighten. Reinstall the locking collars. And lastly, we need to secure the bottom of the cover. The last retaining screw. Tighten, just snug it, and then Tighten up the other four screws that we had loosened earlier. This concludes the segment on replacing the controller.